big Apple event. Um, I, uh, I won't hit the news. You probably uh, hit that, but uh, new iPhone SE, uh, new low end iPad, new M1 ultra chip and a new uh, platform called the, uh, the Mac studio. So first of all, let's hit uh, the iPhone SE. Uh, some of the things that came to mind, uh, it's interesting. There's room for uh, an iPhone SE and an iPhone 13 mini, which, um, you know, we'll see what happens. The biggest difference between the two is you get uh, one camera uh, versus versus two. Uh, the other thing is you don't get millimeter wave on the SE. And that's that's one of the things I wanted to bring up is, is you know, should we look at the lack of millimeter wave as a, you know, conviction of the um, of the carriers for not uh, bringing it out uh, enough, uh, enough quickly? Um, I, I think we should, you know, we had two and a half years that there are solutions uh, like Movandi out there to get you know, Genode B performance at, at uh, you know, 10% of the cost uh, using uh, one of their repeaters. So I, I see this as a, I see this as a fail uh, for, uh, for the carriers. Um, let's move on to the new chip. Uh, you have the uh, M1 Ultra, which is two M1 Maxes uh, glued together uh, in a, um, uh, I would say a super high performance on silicon package using uh, the latest of uh, TSVs. So, um, you know, there's nothing new about putting two chips together in a package. Heck, uh, Intel was doing this uh, 20 years ago uh, when I was at AMD. Uh, the challenge is how do you get high performance and low, uh, low wattage, right? And what is unique about what Apple did on the package is they did it in silicon using uh, a TSMC uh, packaging technique. What's less than impressive is they didn't stack it, right? Uh, so this is this is not even a two and a half D. I mean, maybe you can argue this is two and a half D. It's absolutely not three D because there's nothing three D about it because you two these see these two suckers uh, glued together. And performance is exactly what you would expect. Uh, it, it scales, and they have done some magic with programming to make two GPUs look like one. Uh, it's already baked into the operating system to make uh, two sockets look like one processor to the ISV, and and that is uh, important. Uh, what I'm seeing uh, about early uh, early performances does not outperform AMD's best, which is uh, Threadripper, which uh, doesn't surprise me. And it's funny, uh, Apple came out and said highest performance, right? Well, uh, in pure Apple fashion, it's it's just it's it's not true. Um, I give them credit for doing it in a much lower wattage and also adding graphics to it, which they're claiming are um, 3090 uh, level uh, graphics. But um, big picture here, uh, evidence that packaging is as strategic as CoreLogic IP. Uh, Apple learned a lot from TSMC, Intel, and and NVIDIA. And I'll be I'll be impressed if the performance per watt uh, claims uh, pass. Uh, uh, muster. Um, they also brought out this new platform, uh, essentially a Mac Studio. Uh, take a Mac Mini, stack one on top of it, uh, give it a lot of airflow, and you have what's called the Mac Studio, which houses the the M1 Ultra. Um, I would say that pragmatism is back at Apple. You know, we've got freaking USB A ports. What? Right? The company that uh, had all Thunderbolt USB C on its uh, on its notebooks. Um, is is getting super uh, pragmatic here. And wait for this, an HDMI port. What? Um, unexpected, but uh, this is smart. Um, now, unfortunately, the platform can't play any games, uh, which which I guess is fine. But you know, if you're if you're on Apple and you're looking for higher performance, um, this is probably a decent thing to look at. But if you want the highest performance, you still should be looking at AMD with a an nvidia uh, graphics card oh, okay final uh final thing i should have brought this in on the iphone um um where are the apple modems daniel uh that that we heard so much about two and a half years ago intel uh, apple bought a fully functional modem from intel um it was late on millimeter wave but it 
on mid band and low band, it was absolutely there. Where where is this, uh, Daniel? I, I have no idea. Two and a half years ago, why didn't it show up in the SE? Why didn't it show up in the uh, uh, up in the iPad, which doesn't have voice, which is a heck of a lot easier than doing uh, voice and uh, and data. So with that, I am done, my friend. All right. Well, I'll hit it quickly. This is a show that fills gaps in the lineup. It's not the big show for Apple. This this the spring is. Hey, uh, you know, we've got a few things. Uh, hitting that low end is going to be important. Um, so, you know, getting that SE out there. I, I think with the premium tier and even mid tier Qualcomm Snapdragon, the the Android devices are are sexier at the bottom than the Apple devices. But I do think that Apple, uh, you know, knows its market, knows where it needs to hit price points, knows about volume. And, you know, so that was the big part of that show. You know, the the iPad Air, the Mac stuff, these are gap fillers. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the developer conference is when you'll get the next powerhouse. And then in the fall is when we see the stuff everybody really cares about. So it was kind of an Apple event. Snoozer in my mind, but, you know, they did fill some gaps.